Well, good Friday morning, folks. It is October 1st, 2021. Welcome to October, as they say. And uh, it feels like fall out there. And, uh, and it should. It's fall. So today we are going to jump into the fifth chapter of John's Gospel. We're going to look at the first nine verses today. Um, and remember, we've just finished chapter four, where we had the woman at the well, and then we had the official's uh, son that was healed. And both of those have to do uh, with, with faith. First, you know, the woman uh, left. She heard Jesus speak. She, you know, having heard him and seen him, she had faith enough that she left that water jug behind. Remember that that's her lifeline. And I mentioned that that is comparable to the story of the blind man leaving his cloak behind, that thing that sustains their life. That cloak was very important to that blind man. And then yesterday we talked about faith in the story of the official having, you know, the different kinds of faith that he had, uh, desperate faith, or desperate faith of desperation, um, hopeful, you know, he was hopeful faith, um, wishful perhaps faith, um, but at any rate, and then finally true faith. And so today we're going to hit another story of faith. But here Jesus has got to Jerusalem, and in John's Gospel, Jesus goes to Jerusalem several times, and in Luke's Gospel, it, it, it talks about him going there every year. Uh, Mark, uh, he's only there once. So, that is the difference in the, in the stories about Jerusalem. So, if you get confused about it, there is, there is differences of the stories. Uh, but, here Jesus is going up to one of the festivals, and he is in Jerusalem when this occurs. So, let's look at chapter 5, verses 1 to 9 today in John's Gospel. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called in Hebrew, Bethsaida, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath. And that part's important, but we'll talk about that um, on Wednesday next week. Because remember, Monday and Tuesday I'm going to take some vacation time. I uh, was going to take the whole week, but things changed since I've got to be here today and tomorrow uh, to do funerals. So I kind of broke up my, my vacation, and so we're just going to take a short, small amount uh, Monday, Monday and Tuesday, well, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday as vacation days uh, instead of taking the whole week. So I'll be back on Wednesday and we'll pick up at chapter or verse 10 in chapter 5 on Wednesday. Clint will be putting up some devotions on Monday and Tuesday for me. So thank you in advance to Clint. Um, but let's talk about this here. Uh, it's a festival of the Jews. Jesus is in Jerusalem. Now, in Jerusalem, there's a sheep gate and there is a pool called Bethsaida. I've been there. It's a amazing and beautiful place. In its day, it would have had coverings over the top. There would have been a roof over that area. Um, but it's a, it's, it goes down. It's quite deep uh, below where you're at. Excuse me. On the walkways. Um, excuse me. I got up very early this morning. Um, and some things we had to deal with. Gail left for Omaha, and I will meet her there on Sunday, early Sunday morning. Um, but there are there are it's a beautiful beautiful site and actually we were there we did some prayers and we did some some uh, some uh, uh, meditations in that area when we were there it was really quite quite memorable and quite moving but it is a real area and the water that run, flows through there it's coming in from springs okay and it flows through there and it's serve it, it's, it's also duct work moving the water from springs through duct work to uh, what they believed was or the Temple Mount was at so this would be water that's going through this area on its way through the aqueducts and the, and, the, and the duct work to the temple. So this is water that's going to be used for the ceremonial cleaning um, and the washing of the sacrificial animals and things like that in the temple. So this is water that's going to, you know, it's on its way to the most holy of holy, sacred sacred thing place. Uh, so this is important to them. Uh, that, that this is symbolic to them. Um, but it's also a place where they're, as the pilgrims are on their way to the temple, they're going through here. And so they're part of what they're supposed to do is give alms to the poor. 
and help the needy. And so this is a place where people were gathered to to try to uh, receive uh, givings or offerings, uh, alms from the from the pilgrims as they came through. So it was a place where people were there, essentially begging um, and waiting for waiting for uh, you know, help assistance. And so that's one of the reasons why they were congregated there, as well as they believed that the, because the water, so, certain times the water would stir up for whatever reason, um, and they believed. Uh, now, in in some re, some versions of this, there is an additional bit of text. This is not in the oldest oldest of the um, of the documents, the manuscripts. This is what you call a gloss. This is something that would have been written most likely in the margins of a manuscript and at some point a scribe thought oh that must have gotten missed and added it back into the text um, at the end of verse 3 there are some texts that add this that helps explain saying this is also explained a little bit later in the text but at 3 it's sometimes added and 4 waiting for the stirring of the water for an angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons into the pool and stirred up the water whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well from whatever disease that person had. So that's most likely a gloss, uh, most likely a uh, somewhere along the line a scribe put that over there to ex trying to help explain things a little bit um, about the, the angel stirring it up. That was true. That's what they believed. Um, but the, the the oldest and the most uh, authentic and the most reliable manuscripts don't have that. So it's really almost certainly what they call a gloss and an and addition added into the text that someone had written into the in the margin but it does it is helpful for us to understand what's going on here um so they would believe the water be stirred up and the first one to get in the water they believed would be healed well of course these people are all blind lame paralyzed ill of in one form or another and so it, you, it would be quite a uh, conundrum for all of them and any of them to get into water uh, much less this fellow here who has, has been paralyzed uh, for 38 years. Uh, he's unable to walk. So, um, and so he can't get to the water before, uh, before anybody, before somebody else would get there. But Jesus comes along, and this is an interesting one because here the man doesn't come to Jesus. Jesus senses the man's been ill for a long time, and he asks him, if he wants to be made well. And the sick man asked him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up while I'm making my way there. He, so he has an excuse about, I, I can't do it. I just can't do it. Um, and that's one of the things about us in life, isn't it? This is where we can walk away from this with a very much a, a, a life lesson or a message here. Um, life application is what I'm trying to say. Um, a lot of times in life we go through and we have trouble. But we end up getting comfortable with that trouble. We end up getting comfortable with that situation that we don't like, but we're comfortable with it. We understand it, and so we, we hold on to it. Sometimes we hold on to it for decades, just like this poor soul. Uh, but rather than trying to find a way out, um, we, we, we're more comfortable staying there. And so even when someone offers to us that opportunity, um, we might be hesitant. Which, well, I, can't, I can't possibly do that. I've always been here. I've always done this. I'm, this is the way I am. Um, and, and it's not necessarily an inability, a, a, a physical inability. It could be job situation. It could be a marital situation. You name it. What have you. It's not just health. It's not just anything like that. It could be any kind of a thing in, in life. Um, you know, you name it. It could be applied anywhere. Um, and what Jesus is saying, you can do it. I'm telling you, you can. Have faith in me. Get up and walk. Take up your mat. First, take up your stand up. Take up your mat and walk. Now that had to take a bit of faith because that's really, you know, re realize that even if you are bedridden for a week, your legs get so weak that you're not able to 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 motor, motivate very well. You, it, 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 muscle weakness comes about from activity. Inactivity, you you will atrophy sets in quickly. So 38 years, if he hadn't been walking. Um, it, 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 it's a, quite a stretch to think he could stand up and pick up a mat and walk away. Um, but the man was made well, and he immediately picked up his mat and walk, and began to walk. So it's faith. He hears it. He accepts it. He's willing at this point, <laughs> even though 
for all those years, he was unwilling to try to do something to better his situation, um, or maybe he felt he can, couldn't, but in reality we can. We just listen to Jesus. We just look for, look up for help and ask for help. Um, there's not really any situation we can't get out of. Um, we're given given enough endurance and enough faith to uh, to do so. Um, and again, this is I think I see this applying in our lives much more so to to some other aspects rather than just health. Um, but even health, you, you can I, I see transformation videos of people that are morbidly obese and they decide to try to start to exercise and the next thing you know there's the, the, it may take them several years but they are are finally in healthy weight and they're doing things and working out and being healthy and they've improved their 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 life immensely they are now finally able to enjoy their life whereas before they were stuck waiting by the pool for the water to stir so we can apply it along the line anywhere now Wednesday, when I come back, we will deal with this whole thing about that at the very end of chapter 9, or verse 9, now that day was Sabbath. And that's where the problem starts. And that's when the fight started, as they say. But with that, I'm going to let you go. Um, do remember to pray for uh, the family of Shirley Hunsaker and for Bud Toms. Uh, today I'm doing Bud's uh, graveside service, and tomorrow we will do Shirley's. So but be praying for all, both those families, because they certainly need your your prayers, and they need God's comfort. God bless you all, and please, please, please be a blessing to someone today. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.